so someone fell asleep on the way to where we were going. Currently I went to the sh shrine, shrine of Christ, try that again. Anyway, so um, I will show you more whenever he wakes up or I wake him up later, depending on what happens first. Now we're inside the Shrine of Christ. Look at that Christmas stuff that they have all year round. Pretty cool car. Let's continue. We have Jesus and a baby. But that's the first one. What baby is that? Jesus. Now we're going to do the prayer to them, let's Mount Sinai and see what else there is. That's just what I read just now. This is his first time here, my second time, so we'll see what we can do. It feels nice and peaceful here. He likes the fountains today. Moses at Mount Sinai. made a covenant with his people. He wrote his law upon two tablets of stone. He gave them to Moses, saying, I am the Lord your God. You should not have strange gods before me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember to keep holy the Lord's day. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. After the commandments were read to the people, Moses directed them to know and follow these laws of the Lord. In the New Testament, Jesus said to the people, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. We must make it a point to learn them, love them, and live them. We are to teach them to our children and grandchildren. And we will change our world. Here to St. Juan Diego, an Aztec convert to Christianity, Tepeyac Hill.
which is now part of Mexico City, in the year 1531 on December 9th and December 12th. She asked him to tell the bishop to build a church on that spot in her honor. But the bishop wanted a sign to prove that the Mother of God was making this request. So Our Lady told Juan, give him these roses as a sign for me. Juan gathered the roses in his cloak and brought them to the bishop. As he unfolded his cloak full of roses, a miraculous image of Our Lady suddenly appeared on the inside of that cloak. That miraculous image has now been venerated by the faithful for almost 500 years in the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe and is the most recognized image of the Mother of God. Tens of millions of pilgrims visit the shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe every year, begging her intercession and maternal affection for the needs and hopes and dreams. When it was evening, Jesus, while at table with the twelve, said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And while they were eating, Jesus took bread. He said a blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. His apostles remembered how sometime earlier he had said, My flesh is true food, my blood is true drink. You must eat my flesh and drink my blood. Then, after singing a hymn, he went out, as was his custom, to the Garden of Gethsemane, and the disciples followed him. You were welcome to sit with him at the table, just as his apostles did. said to them, what should I do with Jesus, who was called the Messiah? All of them said, what did he crucify? What did he have? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, what did he crucify? Pilate then took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am the innocent of this just man's blood. How is it? that the God who made the heavens and the earth could be silent before his own creation and allow himself to be condemned. He stands before a proud and arrogant humanity that seeks to drive him to his knees. In the midst of the lies that are leveled against the one who is true, Christ stands. We know he takes our place. Jesus accepts his cross. The heavy cross was laid upon Jesus' bruised shoulders. He accepted his cross meekly, even joyously, because by that cross, he intends to redeem the world. Christ stands silent, and the anger of humanity rages around him. Can they endure his strength, his purity, his profound humility? They lash out, cursing the cross upon him. Lovingly, Christ seizes the opportunity to pull the cross to himself. He covers himself with our sin. Jesus falls the first time. As he labors under the weight of the cross, Jesus slowly sets forth on the way to Calvary. His agony in the garden exhausts his body. He is sore with blows and wounds as his strength fails him. 
gaze upon our Lord as he falls for the first time. Selves to believe that most of our sins are small and insignificant. Rather, the weight of what seems innocent enough causes our Lord to fall for the first time. Where's the sound coming? Jesus meets his sovereign mother. Carrying his cross, Jesus looks up and sees his mother. How oppressive that experience must have been for both of them. How painful this must have been for Mary. Don't you wonder what would become of your son? What were your dreams for the boy? What were your hopes for the man? In the reality of this moment, you are cut to the heart. Yet you remain faithful to me. Now you are the perfect woman, wife, and mother. Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus carry his cross. Jesus' strength continued to fail. He appeared unable to go on. The soldiers compelled Simon of Cyrene to help Jesus carry his cross. Mommy? Shares the burden of the cross. With nothing but a basic concern for a fellow human being, he reluctantly, but nonetheless surely, stepped forward into the pages of history. In doing this, his name has been remembered for all time. Oh, that history would say the same of us. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Veronica, compelled by devotion and compassion, makes her way through the crowd and presents her veil to Jesus to wipe his face. And his holy image remains on the veil. Your face that day might have been that of any man crucified for any nameless crime. But oh, the courage of one woman who dared to love, who bent to show a simple act of compassion and kindness, records forever the face of love itself. May we see your face in that of all humanity. Falls the second time. The suffering Jesus under the weight of his cross, again falls to the ground. But the cruel executioners do not permit him to rest a moment. Pushing Mama. and striking him, they urge him onward. Our arrogance, our violence, our injustices, all press down upon the body of Christ. What we turn a blind eye to strikes at Christ's holy body as surely as the wood that crushed into his very back. Jesus speaks to the women of Jerusalem. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, and among them were some women who were weeping with compassion. Jesus, turning to them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. As you journey along this path with Jesus, is your heart moved with compassion? Jesus falls the third time. Jesus, arriving exhausted at the foot of Calvary, falls for the third time. His weakness was extreme, and the cruelty of his executioners was excessive. They tried to hasten his steps, but he hardly had it's strength to move. Right now, right this could be the fall from which you may not have the strength to rise. The devastating ignorance of our sin drives us to the ground. Oh, Jesus, we have fallen so many times, and yet your love for us never falters, no matter the number of our sins. You are always ready to forgive us. Jesus is stripped of his garments. As Jesus neared the place of his crucifixion, the executioners stripped his clothes from his bleeding body. As a final insult, he was stripped of his clothing. He was left with nothing. Yet he was able to give us all that we need through his sacrifice. 
Jesus has been nailed to the cross. Jesus, after being thrown on the cross, willingly extended his hands and offered to his eternal Father the sacrifice of his life for our salvation. These captors nailed his hands and feet to the cross, preparing him for his final sacrifice. Humanity to man knows no bounds. Behold your Savior, pierced for our offenses. Jesus dies on the cross. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. One of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuked him and said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, Amen, I say to you. Today you will be with me in paradise. Then crying out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. 